42. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. My name is Steven Zhou and I'm the president of this club. Each week we bring to you a new program on education, innovation, and entrepreneurship. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this week we are honored to have Oren Mahoney give us a program on the topic of does anyone know what is the first object of Rotary? Now before I introduce Oren, I would like to first have everyone on this call with us today to briefly introduce himself. Starting with how I see it on a screen, uh, to my to my right is Ken. How's it going, Ken? <laughs> You're muted, by the way. Hey, <laughs> I wasn't uh, I wasn't prepped for this. Uh, my, name, my name is Ken. <laughs> I'm a I'm a college student right now, and it was in the military and then the private military, uh, trying to get into a top ten school at the moment, and uh, just really busy with with extracurriculars and tests and all that kind of stuff. Perfect. And he's going to get into it too. He's just one of the smartest people I know. So <laughs> see your Snapchats all the time. And then uh, right below him, we have Monique. Hi, I'm Monique Lacange Zizenheni. I'm the library director for the city of Palo Alto. And then to her left, we have Tina Orsi. Hi, I'm actually Tina Orsi Hardigan. I have many names. Um, <laughs> I am uh, I'm a community volunteer, and I am currently one of the assistant governors for um, for our district governor, Oren Mahoney. And so I'm here to join because I'm working with Stephen in the same area, Area 8. Perfect. Welcome. And then uh, to her left, we have Chris Cochran. Hi, I'm Chris Cochran. I'm a film and television director who lives, works, and breathes in Toronto, Canada. I'm also the chair of PR for this fabulous club. Perfect. And uh, right below him, um, we'll get to you later, Orin. <laughs> right below him, we have Mitty Chang. Oh, muted. Uh, my name is Mitty Chang. I am a web designer by trade, and I'm the media past president for this Rotary E. Through the video camera, you also see uh, my friends and fellow Rotarians, uh, Steve and Terry Lingenbrink, who will be. Uh, to other people in the video. Perfect. And uh, to his right, we have uh, Steve Shags Shagrin. Hi, Oren. Hi. Shags, better known as well, Stephen Shagrin, better known as Shags. I'm a, gosh, I lost count now, since 1982. Perfect attendance. And from a family of longtime perfect attendance Rotarians. My great uncle was the first one working on it when he died in 1964. And the Youngstown, Ohio Club met at the hospital and wheeled him down so he wouldn't break his record. So <laughs> I'm the past membership chair of this club, past president of two other clubs in 5160 and 6650. Perfect. Welcome. It, it's wonderful to have a district governor here. And I also the PIA master. I work as a money coach and a retirement coach in Walnut Creek. Oh, very good. And then uh, finally we have uh, to her to his right, we have Yvonne. Uh, you're muted too, by the way. There we go. <laughs> uh, Yvonne, you're muted. I don't think she can hear me. Uh, Yvonne, you're muted. <laughs> there we go. Hi, let's try that again. There we go. My name is Yvonne. Um, I am an educator and I'm also a master's student studying um, for my master's in education right now at San Jose State. And I'm also a director for this Rotary Club. Awesome. And then we just had uh, hopped on. We had Roger Plusted uh, just join us today. Hey, Roger. Just say a few words to our club and uh, just introduce yourself. Yes, I am Roger Plested and I am from Camel, British Columbia. And we are still in a smoke-filled valley because of the uh, British Columbia wildfires. <coughs> oh, man, hopefully that's going okay. And then uh, finally, uh, I'm going to uh, just <coughs> briefly introduce Oren so that we can hand it off to him. So uh, Oren Mahoney is a longtime resident of Cupertino. California, after graduating from Carnegie Mellon University in 1967, he came to California to work at Hewlett Packard and received a master's degree from Stanford while working there. Uh, after about 35 years management career at HP, he retired and devoted his time to community activities. He is a former member of the Cupertino, Cupertino City Council and has served twice as mayor. In addition to many other community groups, he is an active member and past president of the Rotary Club of Cupertino as part of the club's international service activities he has participated in 11 project trips to Mexico, China, India, and Central and South America. He was the Area 8 Assistant Governor in 2014 and 15, the District's Membership Committee Chair in 2015-16, and 
and district conference chair in 2016 and 17. Now, without further ado, I'll now hand it over to Oren. He's been, <laughs> he's had a lot of hats. <laughs> a lot of hats, a lot of hats, and, and other hats in Cupertino too. So I'm gonna uh, share my screen and I've got some uh, PowerPoints, which uh, I'll give my HP background, gotta use those PowerPoints, but. Uh, Um, so you heard a little bit about my background and, uh, let me try this. Why won't the slides advance? There we go. So you already heard a little bit about me, you know, 35 years at HP and then Second Life as a volunteer and then uh, Cupertino Rotary member since 2000. So if you do the math, came out of California in 67, didn't join until 2000, so I kind of joined late in life. And uh, the question is, how did I get here? Um, usually when I'm traveling physically, I say I came up 880 or you know came over Highway 17, but it really comes down to six magic words. Have you ever thought about Rotary? Um, I was, uh, as you heard, I was on a city council and in 1999 I ran for city council. I had been on the planning commission and running for the city council was a natural next step. And I lost that election. Uh, I actually lost the next election after that and finally learned the, the meaning of third time's a charm. Uh, but after the first election, I actually become very good friends with uh, my, the, the person who was running against me for the open seat, the person that, that, that beat me in the election. Believe it or not, you can still be friends in elections then. I'm not sure how true that would be today. But at the end of that, he said, you know, have you ever thought about Rotary? A lot of my Rotarian friends helped me with the, um, in the election. Uh, we do a lot of good work here in the community. And I looked at him and said, Rotary isn't it like a businessman's networking group. Why do I need that? Because I was working at HP. We didn't need contacts in the community. Uh, no, no, it's all about service, he said, and uh, as they say, the rest is history. Um, I still use those words all the time. Uh, I go to all the chamber mixers and other events, uh, you know, connected here in the community, and, and I'm always using them. I used them as a chamber event a couple of weeks ago, and uh, uh, the woman I was talking to there has since come to the club a couple of times, and uh, looks like she's uh, eventually going to join. Um, membership's important. It's important uh, for, for all of us. Um, uh, even if your club doesn't want to grow and some clubs don't want to grow, um, it's always good to have fresh ideas so you get fresh people, you know, to work on projects and things like that. And you are going to lose some members. Um, one of the keys to membership that, that we've, that Rotary's worked on in the last few years is flexibility. Um, you know, I'm talking to the choir here about flexibility in meetings and attendance. You guys were a pioneer in our district in, in alternate meeting styles. Um, but we do have a lot of clubs that are doing some different things in the district now. Um, having one meeting as a social meeting, uh, another as a project meeting. We, of course, we've got the Passport Club. It's kind of a hybrid between, I think, what, what you guys do and what a regular club does. Um, but all of those are important. Uh, certainly in today's uh, world, especially if you can attract younger members, uh, I think flexibility is key. And, and you know, we've got a membership seminar this weekend, and we'll probably talk more about that, among other things. Um, kinds of membership, um, you know, we're being flexible there. We've got the other, as I'm doing my club visits, I've learned that we, at least one of the clubs is doing a corporate membership, and we've tried some other things. Uh, one thing I'm not sure you're aware of is uh, one of the other things that came out of the council legislation is the ability to be in a Rotaract club and a Rotary club at the same time. And when I first heard that, I went, mm, I don't see that that buys people anything. But as we've learned, um, we've actually uh, implemented a pilot in, in Cupertino Rotary where if you're a Rotaract member, uh, you can join our club at a reduced dues rate. Basically, you're paying just for the RI and district dues. And we've already inducted a member uh, in that program, and we've got another one coming up and uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, and what we found out is they didn't want to leave Rotaract, so they wanted to keep some of that social connection that they had built there. Uh, so they wanted to take a step into Rotary without taking a step out. So again, that's something that I've been talking to other clubs about. 
and qualifications for memberships, that's changed over time. When I joined Rotary, you had to be a business or a professional leader. Um, in other words, you had to have worked in a profession. Um, that changed after that, uh, partly as work that was done right here in the district to include community leaders. Uh, we found that there were people, and again, it was kind of a pilot in our club. We found out there were people out there, uh, your classic soccer mom, that people had never necessarily uh, been in a professional workplace, but you know they were involved in PTA and the soccer teams and all the other activities. And if you looked at the types of things they knew how to do, you know, fundraise, manage volunteers, organize projects, motivate people, they could probably do that maybe better than your average dentist. And so that actually got changed, went up through um, uh, the leadership in the district here all the way to, to Rotary International. And now it's, uh, it's currently it was business professional community leader. Now it's really says, if you want to do good things in the community, we, we want you here. So what does Rotary mean to me after, uh, you know, I had to think about that as I was, you know, coming into the role of district governor and, you know, back at, at the little teaser at the beginning, it's really encapsulated in the first object of Rotary. Uh, most people know uh, certainly about the four-way test and, you know, about service above self. But the first, uh, there are four objects of Rotary, and the first one, it really encapsulates Rotary to me. It's the development of acquaintance as an opportunity for service. And that's a kind of a, an old-fashioned way of saying making friends while doing good. Uh, both parts of that are really important to me. First, the development of acquaintance. Um, I, as you heard, I was on a city council. I've been involved, I'm probably on six other nonprofit boards in Cupertino and the surrounding area. And I meet people there, but it's only in Rotary where I really make lifelong friendships. And uh, certainly at the club level, now at the district level, and, and ultimately beyond. And, and uh, I think that resonates with other people as I go around in the other clubs. And it, it certainly ties back to this, the Siegel and Gale study about why people join Rotary. Uh, but the opportunity for service, uh, and I want to focus on the word opportunity and just talk about some things that I've been able to do um, because I'm in Rotary that I would have not been able to do if I wasn't. Um, here's one from about 10 years ago. Our district does a, um, a cleft palate, a cleft lip surgeries. Uh, it's called Faces of Hope. We go down to Guatemala every year. And there's a medical team, of course, and then, you know, there's uh, people that are not on the medical team that go out and, and work in various areas, uh, including in, uh, they have the equivalent of a Ronald McDowell house where, where the people that come in and, and spend a week there uh, are, and uh, people volunteer there as well. But I got to sit in on, on some of the surgeries. And when you're sitting in watching a, uh, a, an infant's life face being, re, you know, reconstructed, um, that's a pretty amazing thing. And, and I was fortunate enough to have my daughter go down at the time who was thinking about getting in the medical field. She came back, job shadowed with the husband of another Rotarian, and now she's a physician assistant doing her own surgeries up in Roseville. Um, I think most people know that Rotary does a lot of work with the Wheelchair Foundation. I've had the opportunity on, on the, the different international visits I've gone on uh, to distribute probably over 3,000 wheelchairs, probably 2,000 in China alone. Uh, again, we take for granted in the United States that if somebody needs a wheelchair, they've got a wheelchair. Um, not true around the rest of the world. And when you're, somebody's uh, child's being carried in over their parent's shoulder, you know, because they have no other form of mobility and you put them in a wheelchair for the first time, it's, it's pretty exciting. Uh, you don't have to go all the way outside the country to do something that, you know, uh, another opportunity for service that I think would only come through Rotary. So in Cupertino, uh, there's a camp up in the foothills above the city here uh, for kids with disability, uh, primarily developmental disabilities, uh, autism, cerebral palsy, et cetera. And for the past five or six years, we do something called Operation Snowflake, where we bring 10 tons of snow uh, in December, up to the camp and in trucks, in bags and trucks, it's ice, you know, and, and uh, but it turns into sled runs and snowmen and snowballs. And, and these are kids that are not going to go up skiing next weekend or whatever. These are kids that, you know, for the first time in their life are seeing snow and able to do these things. So um, where I really learned about the true power rotary was way back when I had just joined. Um, 
So um, I'd been in Rotary about a year, and I still was working at HP at the time. And I got a call from uh, the lobby that somebody wanted to talk to me. Didn't know him, you know, but I went down to talk to him. Um, his name is Michael Piketty. Actually, it's a Piketty Winery. His grandfather's winery was here in Cupertino. So I recognized the name, but that's not why he was there. He was there because he was living in Chile at the time and was working, volunteering, and helping uh, people in a children's hospital down there. And he wanted HP to donate computers. And I was the chamber representative on, the, I was on HP's representative, sorry, on the chamber board. And uh, that's how he got my name. And I told him, if you want computers from HP, you know, here's the forms to fill out and, you know, process to go through and all that. But I also said, you know, the kinds of things you're talking about uh, in the hospital, and it was kind of a Patch Adams kind of hospital where they were, you know, had kid had the doctors as you see there dressed up in you know bright uh, outfits and things those are the kinds of things that I'm hearing in my rotary club and I said there's a couple of people in the club that I'll give you their contact names and people happen to be Jim Walker who's a past district governor and, and Dick Lowmiller who at the time was not a district governor became district governor is now passed away and he went on his way so about two weeks later, um, he shows up at Rotary. He had made the connection uh, to talk to talk to them about a project. And they started talking about doing what now we would call a global brand. Now, I wasn't on the World Service Community Service team at the time. I didn't even know that that existed in the club, and I wouldn't know a global brand if it fit me. But they started talking about relatively small dollars in the tens of thousands of dollars, which were, which were global grants at the time. But then they went to the Packard Foundation and got another $200,000. So now you're starting to talk about significant money. And then there's an organization actually uh, uh, founded by someone in the, in the district here called um, Assist International that refurbishes medical equipment. And so you can use it around the world. So they take medical equipment and by refurbishing, you can you know, get it for basically pennies on the dollar. So they got involved. And then Stanford University, or Stanford Hospital, excuse me, got involved from an IT point of view. And then the, the community down there in Chile got involved from an infrastructure point of view to do some of the, the work there. The bottom line is that it's an intensive care unit um, in a children's hospital that was the equivalent of a million dollar project. If it was a million dollars, if you just did it the normal way. And it's, it's saving 100 kids' lives a year. It's still saving 100 kids' lives a year. And that got this idea about the true power of Rotary around the world got um, confirmed. I was kidding around earlier with people that my first international convention was in Salt Lake City when I, I was uh, president elect. And my next international convention was in Atlanta last year. This year I'm going all the way to Toronto to, or next year, way international. Uh, but Bill Gates spoke last year in Atlanta. Obviously, he spoke as part of the Gates Foundation and the partnership that they're doing with Rotary uh, around polio. Uh, but what, interesting enough, Bill Gates Sr. spoke uh, in Salt Lake City. And he said something at the time that resonated with me and certainly has been true in all of my international projects since that if you have a project in your local community, if you need to rebuild the uh, park benches or fix the playground or whatever, Rotary can certainly do that, and we do a lot of those things. Uh, but there's a lot of other organizations that can do that in a community. But if the project is to cure blindness in India or give uh, clean water to somebody in Africa, uh, deliver wheelchairs, as you heard, uh, or do surgeries down there, it's only Rotary that has that scope and scale of, of clubs around the world and people around the world to do that. So, um, you know, international service is, 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 and membership are really my two passions. So that's enough about me. Let me talk a little bit about District 5170 uh, for those that aren't familiar, or even for those that are. So there are 54 clubs in a district, the last one being the Passport Club that was just formed last year. We basically start up in Oakland and run down the Holy Spay through through uh, Santa Clara County, Silicon Valley, and down to uh, Santa Cruz and Morgan Hill and Gilroy. Um, we did some strategic planning last year and came up with a mission statement that was kind of interesting because we looked at other districts and their mission statement was, uh, we're going to cure polio and we're going to, you know, give clean water to, you know, communities here and there and whatever. 
And that's not the district's mission. That's the clubs. All the work happens in the clubs. All the projects come out of the clubs, you know, with the exception of polio, that's kind of the overarching mission from our eye. But everything else, um, we don't have district projects. Um, it's really the club. So we came up with the mission of the district is to inspire and support the clubs um, through communications tools, training programs, events, supporting infrastructure, and we're getting better about a lot of those things. And it was interesting, we did a survey with the clubs at the time about uh, what we did well and, and what they needed. So, you know, one of the questions is, you know, what is the value added of the district? And there are certain areas, let's take community service, where I'd you know, I don't think, and it's been confirmed, that we add a lot of value. Most clubs know how to do community service. They know the needs in their own community. Um, they, you know, they know how to raise money, although we can give them some tips there, some fundraising tips. Uh, but then they can go and do the project. Uh, so if you look at some of the other avenues of service, though, there is high value added. So the highest is really youth services. If you look at the things that the district does in the area of youth services, interact, RILA, Youth Exchange, Speech Contest, Youth Protection, all of those could not be done at the club level. And I'll talk a little bit about each of them. Interact is really interesting. I don't, I don't think you guys support an Interact club. Maybe you do. Um, um, actually, um, one of the most interesting things is that our district has the, our, we have the largest Interact district in the world. We have 7,000 interactors in this district. We have just under 4,000 Rotarians, so we almost have two interactors for every Rotarian. Um, as, as you guys know, we do a district conference every year. It's like a big deal if we can say 1,000 people went to the district conference. And we count everybody. If you went the night before for the speech contest or the project the next day or lunch, dinner, or whatever, you know, if we get to 1,000, we, we think that's a good deal. This is, these are um, images from the Fall Leadership Conference, which Interact does every year, and it's coming up in, in October again. They get 4,000 Interactors together in one place at one time to kick off their year and to, uh, and to announce what their main uh, international project and community project are that they do as a district. And they raise over $100,000 for those projects as well. Uh, youth exchange is something that uh, district run. Again, you couldn't run it at an individual club level. Um, I think it's something we could do more in the district. We, we haven't had, we're not as robust in that area, but what we do is do a really good job. And this was at the district conference with the outbound and inbound uh, youth exchange students. Um, RILA is R Rotary Youth Leadership Academy. Uh, I recognize somebody there. <laughs> and, uh, um, it's held up in uh, uh, Santa Cruz Mountains every year. About 230 campers go through a week of, uh, of true life-changing experience. Um, again, it's, it, it's a one year to put the program together and run it. Uh, it's all volunteer driven. And one of the most amazing things about it is almost all the volunteers that run it and, and do all the work are past campers. Uh, the, the leadership uh, the co-chair was a camper, I think, 20 years ago or something like that. So it really is life-changing and really makes a difference. And then we've got the speech contest. So a club could do an individual speech contest, but, um, you know, taking that to the next level, area level, um, and beyond, ultimately ending up at the, at the district, which is the, this is the award from last year's uh, district, uh, and a winner there um, makes a difference as well. And finally, I don't have a slide on it, but youth protection, the youth protection program is a very important part of running all our youth services. Um, and we, we've got a really good program. We're streamlining some of that in the district to make it uh, easier for people to, to get certified and, uh, um, and, still, be, and still, still be certified, et cetera. So the other area, uh, where I think the district adds a lot of value is uh, with the Rotary Foundation. Um, obviously, we manage the annual fund and the, and the polio drives, um, and that's important um, uh, to kind of, you know, work through that. But more important is the allocation of the funds that come back to the district and the, and the projects and global grants. Um, I'll show you in a minute. The foundation is a very interesting 
charity. It's the only charity I know of where if you do a global grant, and we do a lot of global grants in the district, you will get more money back than you have donated to the found to the foundation. You know, um, and they still do the other work um, out there. And I'll explain how that works in a second, but. Um, so the money that you donate to the Rotary Foundation, roughly half of that comes back to the district in the form of what they call district designated funds. Um, different districts handle those differently. In some districts, the district governor can have a project. Um, in our district, it gets allocated back to the clubs in the same order as, as, as your donation. The idea is you're gonna donate more if you give more back. Um, but the district then manages district projects, which we still have and does a lot of training on global grants. And to do a global grant, while it's high leverage, as you'll see, because it gets matched, um, they are complicated and it takes training and hand-holding and that's another value add in the district. Just, I'm not gonna go into this in too much detail, but this, is, this does show the power of the leverage of, of TRF and how DDF works. Let's say that your club donates $10,000 to the Rotary Foundation. Um, half of that comes back, as I said, as district designated funds. Um, it comes back a few years later, but basically it comes back as district designated funds. And if you're on a regular schedule, it's coming back every year. Um, so now let's say that the club contributes another 5,000 for a global grant. So together there's $15,000 that's being donated, right? 5,000 comes back, it gets matched dollar for dollar, and then the cash gets matched 50 cents on a dollar. So you end up with a $17,500 international project. So you actually have more money than you actually donated. Um, that's if you do a global grant. If you do a district grant, you don't get matched. Uh, but we've got a new program this year to kind of maximize the match and, and, uh, and get more money on both sides that, that, that your president knows about. So the other district priorities and goals are communication. Uh, we've definitely fixed up our, the website that was uh, getting a little stale. Um, events, I'll talk about some upcoming events and training. Um, we wanna do more infrastructure. We have an, our own district Zoom account now, so we can do our own meetings like this. Um, and uh, obviously membership is, is a priority and I'll talk about the upcoming membership seminar. A public image, we didn't have a public image chair last year. We wanna do more there uh, and more, especially on social media there, not the traditional talk to the newspapers. And then I've already talked about the Rotary Foundation. But the bottom line is, you know, and this goes way back to Paul Harris, is whatever it may mean to us, to, to the world, we're gonna be known by the results we achieve. And as I said earlier, it's not the results that the district achieved, and it's not the results that the zone achieves, and it's not the results that RI achieves. It's the result that the clubs have achieved, um, because everything does happen through the clubs. All we can do is, as I say, try to inspire and support them. I want to talk about some upcoming events, um, three of them. Um, there's a membership seminar. Uh, Steve Lingenbrink, who's in this one photo here, I think he's watching us on, on one of the other screens, and uh, Vicki Pulitz are coming down this weekend uh, for a, a seminar uh, that they've been uh, doing. It's been evolving, but they've been, it's a zone-led seminar that they've been doing for the last few years, and it's one of the highest uh, ranked training things that we do. So we're, uh, we're trying to get 100 people there. I think we're up to 80 now. Um, and it's free, um, or it's already been paid for in your dues. Um, and it'll be Saturday morning. And uh, if, you, if, if somebody from your club is not going there, you, you really want to have them go there. We, wanna, we really want at least one person from every club there. Um, Abby is a service. We do two training events a year. We do the assembly in, in the uh, uh, spring, basically to train the new leaders in the club, the incoming leaders, and in the Avenue of Service in the fall to kind of kick things off. Um, and uh, the date is October 5th, it's in the evening, it's a Thursday evening. Um, two things about that, we wanna have um, a big uh, project fair there, that's our chance for the clubs if you're doing a project, an international project, a local project, even something else that you wanna share with the other clubs in the district, this is the place to do that. 
And then we're fortunate to have John Matthews, who's our new Rotary International Director. So Rotary International has uh, a board of directors, um, and John is on that board. Uh, he's basically replaced uh, Brad Howard, that many of you know, that, that termed out last year. Uh, John's background is from Costco, so he has a really strong business background, and I think he's going to bring some, uh, some new ideas, and he'll be our, our keynote speaker at that event. And then uh, save the date, we have 80 rooms reserved um, in, at, at the Fairmont uh, in Toronto. For those of you that are going to the International Convention, this hotel is already sold out, so we have a block of rooms that we're uh, working on how, we, how we're going to register them and then get them to our eye uh, or get them to the, the Toronto people. So if you're interested in that, just contact Olivia at the district office as well. And then we've got the district conference. So the district conference, you know, we're, we're less than a year away, and I can't tell you exactly where it's going to be. And that's, that, it was scarier a month ago when I really didn't know where it was going to be. Um, the reason we don't know where it's going to be, I have two possibilities, um, and my first choice uh, hasn't confirmed yet, but I'm working on it. The first choice is the new Apple campus um, in the event center there, the Steve Jobs Event Center. Um, the only way, that, they haven't said yes yet, they haven't said no yet, I'm working my way through their process, and partly it, it, isn't, it hasn't even really been opened yet. They're going to, you know, they've got a soft opening, they've got people that have moved in. Um, the only way I was um, even in dialogue with that, given Apple's normal uh, secrecy and reluctance to do things, is I was the mayor when that building got approved. So I have, there's kind of a funny story behind that. I was at a chamber mixer. Um, I'd already decided I wanted to try to do this, and it was sometime after that I was at a chamber mixer, and the, uh, the key community relations guy from Apple was there with a, a former uh, assembly, California assembly person. Then I walked up to him, and, and Mike is his name from Apple. He goes, oh, you know, you know Warren, right? Oh, yeah. And he goes, he says, yeah, no, Warren's a great guy. He's the only person on the council that didn't ask for anything for himself, you know, when, this, when we went through the approval process. And I said, funny you should mention it. <laughs> and I started asking him then, and we'll see. So in the meantime, as, as they've dragged their feet, um, it, it's not like you just – you know, all of a sudden show up at a hotel or do one of these things. But I do, so my fallback position, which is locked and loaded, is uh, San Jose State. That's, I know somebody on here going to San Jose State. Uh, they have a new student union there that, that I went and toured, and uh, um, uh, it's fantastic. It has better, uh, better ballroom and meeting rooms than any of the hotels around here, and, and they're, they're nice enough to say that they they know their second choice and and i don't have to pay them yeah you know, i need to tell them sometime soon so hopefully it'll be well it'll definitely be one of those places it'll either be a great venue or a super venue and the date is june the second so i think most of you know by now that uh well you don't have a banner because you don't have a meeting room but <laughs> the electronic banner that uh uh uh, Ian Risley's theme this year is Rotary Making a Difference, and certainly it, it's made a difference to me. You've heard a little bit about how I think it makes a difference in the world, uh, but you also heard that um, it's not just what we do, but a little bit about how we do it. So I put a little bit of my own spin on, on that, and, and to me, Rotary is, is meeting lifelong friends while making a difference, and uh, uh, that's what Rotary means to me, and I and, uh, hope it means the same thing to you as you go through your Rotary career. So that's, that's the end of my talk. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, having us here today, Oren. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, now I'm open to questions. <laughs> uh, Roger. See if we can uh, end the uh, end the sharing real quick, so then we can oh, see. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, I I have no just no no questions. Yeah, just, just this yeah. for the governor. <laughs> I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shag. I have a question okay. in regards to membership. Yeah. Over the last ten years. What has been your district's um, trend in regards to membership? Has it gone down or is it stable or has it gone up? Yeah, no, 
no, no. So, so ten year ten year trend is down. Uh, ten year trend is down for the U.S. So um, last year we had some here's some good news and here's the bad news. Uh, the good news is um, well, we haven't seen, believe it or not, to July. Um, excuse me, the June July first membership official data from our IET for for all the other districts in, in the zone. Uh, but the last time we looked, uh, and what we know is, is we think we either had the highest growth in the zone or, you know, one of the highest growths in the zone. That's the good news. The bad news is we did that by adding 53 members out on a base of 4,000. Not stellar. Uh, it says more about, about the rest of the zone. Uh, so the district was on a downward trend. We, we reversed that trend a couple of years ago with, with a nice little bump. Then we went back down and we went back up. So um, we're, we're definitely stable now. Um, part of that uh, increase has come from the new clubs, from you guys as, an e, as the e-club a few years ago, a passport club. Um, there's the Warren Club that, that's been struggling. That's a Mandarin-speaking club. And we're, tr you know, we're trying some different things. We've got another possible club coming up in Gilroy. Um, adding new clubs makes a difference. Um, my, you know, I'll say a little bit about this Saturday. The big opportunity we have uh, in our district is reflecting a community. Um, we, um, Cupertino is two thirds Asian, as, as you guys, or at least the local people know. Um, we've done a good job in our club about reflecting that community and, and our, actually our current mayor, who was at a Indian flag racing, you know, thing for Independence Day this morning, and our Indian, uh, our, our current mayor is an Indian woman that was the president of our club, and that's how she got visibility and got there. Um, we have not done that in the rest of the district. The other clubs, the other service clubs in Cupertino are old, white, and male, and small. You know, they have 20 members, we have 200 members. Um, and, you know, you just do a pie chart, Cupertino, white, I'm down to a third, Male, I'm down to a six. You know, skew and old. I'm now recruiting from three percent of the population. Not a recipe for growth. Um, you know, Cupertino and Milpitas are very equivalent cities. Same size city, same ethnic mix. They have 35 members. We have 200. So tremendous upside potential there. You know, it's Hispanic community in the South Bay. But uh, that's one of the things we've been been working on and need to keep working on. I think. I think that's. That could be our breakout type of thing, but that's me. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, anybody else have any other questions? Perfect. Well, uh, thank you so much again for uh, joining us today, Oren. Really appreciate your time. And uh, again, if anyone else who's uh, watching this uh, recording, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it down there on the comment section. Uh, I'll be sure to get that you know, those questions answered to you by Oren. Uh, until then, we'll see you guys next week. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Take care.